Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of Lead Code Contest 316, this week's contest. Um, so this problem is the last one, um, or the one before last. Uh, minimum cost to make array equal. So what the problem says is we get two arrays, numbers and cost. Uh, each has an integers. And we can do one operation any number of times we want. And that operation is either increasing or decreasing any element by one. Okay. And we have the cost of doing that operation for each element in nums in this array, right? So cost i is the uh, cost for increasing or decreasing by one uh, number at position i. And what we want is to return the minimum total cost such that all the numbers in nums become equal. Okay? So we want to make all the numbers of nums equal. It doesn't matter which number, but we want to minimize the total cost of doing that. Okay, so well, let's take a look at this example here. Um, so for this array, we have this cost array. So first we can, the first element, um, we can increase it uh, one time to get two, right? Uh, sorry. So we'll increase it one time to get two, right? Um, and the total cost of that is two. Right, and then f the first element we can also um, decrease it by one to get two, and the cost there is three. Okay, and then for the th second one at position two, because this is zero, one, two, five, we can uh, decrease it three times, right, um, to two. Right, so that would be one three times, so three that's the cost for this one. Um, and and then for two, we can leave it as is, and now we have all twos. So the total cost here, five plus three, eight. Um, and you can try other variants, but this one is the best one we can have, the, the smallest one we can have. Um, these are already equal, so return zero. So you get the idea here. Now, the, the time complexity uh, here, it, the number of, uh, n or the length of the array is can be up to 10 to the power of 5. So we know we can do something like n squared or something bigger than that. But anything that is n log n or log n um, or n complexity should work, right? Um, so let's try that. Um, um, so to solve this, you can actually imagine that the total cost is a function like this. So this would be basically um, x, which is like the... Um, the number you would make it equal to. So this is like the target number you would make it e the entire nums equal to. Um, so now you may say, well, why? Um, why is it like this? Because you could you, you, you could imagine it with numbers, but there is like a, a more like mathematical -ish, um way of proving it. But just the intuition is that, so this is X, let's say maybe, the actual minimum like we saw in the second example is 2, right? So if 2 gives us the minimum total cost, then if you increase by, if you increase to 3, right? So you already made all the elements in the array equal to 2. To get to the all to equal to 3, you have to increase by 1 here, increase by 1 here, increase by 1 here, increase by 1 here. So you'd have to make three operations. So you, you would have, sorry, you'd have to make four additional operations to be able to get to three. So, so here, if we, if we pick, if we try to get to one, we need to increase each one of them by one, right? So that would be four operations. If we try to do it, get to four, same thing, we'll need to increase each one by one. And so you can see as we increase past the min, we will only get bigger cost, right? So that's why f of x is smaller or equal to f of x plus 1. And this side, f of x is bigger than f of x plus 1. Um, why is it bigger, right? F let's take 1, for example. And let's take the original array we had, which is 1, 3, 5, 2. So 1 is already 1. We don't need to do anything. 2 we we'll need to increase it, but we need to decrease it. So one operation here. Three, it's closer to two than to one, right? So we need more operations to decrease it to one. Five is closer to two than one, so we need more operations to decrease it to one, which are, f we need four operations versus just three, four, two. 
And these two cancel each other because one is already one, but for two, we need one more operation. Okay? And in the case of two, we need more, more, one operation to increase to one. <laughs> so we can see beca because of three and five, one is more expensive. The cost of one is bigger. And, and you can try with other examples, you will get the same uh, logic. So this is sort of why we have this function. Now the question becomes, how do we find this with binary search? So with binary search, we need to find a pattern like this, either first false and then true, or the reverse, like true and then false. And then we need to find our lower and high values, okay? And um, with this method of doing binary search, low needs to be false and high needs to be guaranteed true. Okay, um, so for this here, what we can do is to make it, because once, it, once we get to this side here, once we get to the right portion, it will only be true, uh, it will only get bigger, so it will only have this function that is true. But that's not the case for this function, because first it's like this, but then when we reach the min, it changes, right, and becomes this function here. Right? What this would mean is for our binary search, we can pick this because it's false here. It keeps being false until it reaches the min, then it will become true and it will keep becoming true. So we have this pattern verified if we use as our function f of x bigger or equal to f of x plus 1. Now, let me just clarify what is f of x. So f of x is total cost to make all array, to make nums, all elements equal to x, equal to x, right? So what should be our low value? It needs to be false. So to guarantee that it's false, we need to just take the minimum element, which is one, and do minus one because, um, because we know that here, these are the elements in the array. So it's always better to take one of the elements in the array and reduce others to it, right? If you take another element that is not in the array, then you would have to reduce to one other element, right? But if you take one element in the array, at least you don't have to incur cost on that element, right? So if you take the min, right, then you would be, x would be here. So this would be the min of numbers. And here, the largest value is the max of numbers. So what this would mean is that we can here take low to be the min of the numbers and take the highest one. And here we need to do minus one just to ensure that for sure it's false. So just in case, um, for some edge case, um, the min is actually the answer, right? So we'll take minus one so that we get false here. And we want to guarantee true for high, so we take the max of nums and we increase by one. Also similar argument just in case the max is actually the, the solution. Okay. And now we just do our binary search. Um, and with our binary search, if you are here, the mid is here and you find that it's true. So this function is true. We need to put high here because the answer is, is either, either mid was the first true or it's not the first true, but so we will need to put the high here so that we have a chance of, of finding the first true. So what we are looking for with our binary search is find the first true value. So if we find that if the function for mid is true, this here for mid is true, then it's always, there is no, there is no use in putting high ab above mid because we know that mid is already true, so either that position is the first true value or it's not. So either that position is here or it's here, right? If it's here, we don't want to put high here because then we lose the true value, right? So we need to assign. Um, so if f of mid is bigger or equal to f of mid plus one, then we need to assign to high the value mid. Otherwise, that means we are in a false value here. Okay, so our low was here. Then it's always better to 
this was mid it's always better to go to mid plus one because we already know that mid is false there is no and we are looking for the true for a true value right so in this case we want to set low to mid plus one um, and then we can at the end once our while loop of binary search exits we can just compare f of low and f of high and pick the minimum of the one which is it's one of those two the solution right so we pick the minimum one um, so that's the idea behind binary search here. Um, now this method of doing binary search, basically when it ends, low would be the last false and high will be the l first true. So in our while loop, we need to maintain that since we need to maintain that low is false and high is true, we need to maintain that the distance between low and high is at least one or it's bigger than one because we want to stop when the difference is just one right when f is low is here and high is here we need to stop so what this would mean is that our while loop here needs to be while high minus low is bigger than one right because once it's equal to one that means low is here and high is here and we are done and we should stop okay so that's the idea um now let's implement this and make sure it passes uh test cases um now, sorry, I made one mistake. This needs to be smaller or equal. So this function here needs to be smaller or equal. This is the, once it's true, it becomes true thing is here, right? Um, so yeah, let's implement this solution and make sure it passes test cases. Um, okay, so what do we need to do here? So we need to um, say n first, just to get the length of the list. And we need to mark our low and high value. So we said low needs to be the min of numbers minus one to guarantee that it's false. High needs to be max of nums plus one. And then for our condition here, we want the distance to be bigger than one. When it reaches one, we are done, right? Um, and we need to define our total function f of x. So this is basically total cost uh, to make all numbers in nums equal to x okay so this is just the sum of making so to make a number equal to another number is just the absolute difference right so f of that number minus x but we need to multiply by the cost for that number so the cost so if the difference is two then we need to remove one or add one twice and so we need to multiply whatever the difference is by the cost to get the cost for all the operations, right? And this is for i in the range of n, right? Because we want to do it for every element in the array. And we return this. If the number is the same, it's equal, then th th for that number, we won't do anything. So the cost would be zero here because this would be zero multiplied by cost, okay? Um, and so here we need to get our mid, which is just low plus high divided by two. We do it like this to avoid overflow. And we do our function. So if f of mid is smaller or equal to f of mid plus one, so that's our true case. So here we want high to be equal to mid because we want to maintain that high is true. If we go to mid minus one, then we don't know, maybe that's the, a false value. And there is no need to go to mid plus one because we know that mid is true, so either mid is the first true, or the first true is to the, its left, right? And then here for low, this means this is false, so this is actually mid plus one. So this means this is false, right? So we are, it's bigger, so in the false case, we need to make low be mid plus one, because we already know that mid is false. Um, so mid plus one. Um, and then at the end, the answer is either high or low, so we return the minimum of the, the total cost for either low or high. One of them is the answer, right? And so let's run this. <coughs> and let's submit. Okay, so that passes test cases. Um, and yeah, this is O of log n because of the binary search, but each binary f search function is doing O of n. So you can think of it sort of like 
or of the, the whatever the the binary search space, which is in this case just um, from the min to the max. So sort of constant, right? Sort of constant here. Um, so basically, O of let's call that R to be the range of the numbers, log of R multiplied by um, to get the sum here we do n. Okay. Um, in terms of space, we are not really using any extra space here. Um, yeah, mostly using a variable, so um, it would be O of one space. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for this problem. Please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.